but yeah, uh, guys, if you're going to be uh, in the business uh, mentality, heaven is not for you. Okay. Uh, when Christ returns to this earth and he does away with the monetary system, there will be no more money because he's going to create so much wealth and abundance of a likes of which we haven't seen since the Garden of Eden, people. There will be no need to sell anything. The entire Middle East is going to become green. The soil enriched. The lakes and the rivers will be renewed. Okay, so everyone will likely be growing all kinds of fruits and vegetables in their backyard. Enough to sustain uh, huge families, whole families. It will actually be a utopia in which Christ is the reigning king literally on earth. And his throne will be in the capital of Jerusalem. Now, if you're thinking, well, you know, how am I going to make a living? You know, again, you probably don't belong in the kingdom of heaven if you're thinking like that. You will not profit off of people's needs in the kingdom of heaven. That's what we're doing. We're profiting off of needs. When we have stores opening, all that kind of stuff, people need stuff, and then we, we sell it to them. Okay? That is the way of people who live in the world to do that. In today's world, we're, we're profiting off the fact that people have needs, man. Let's just keep it real. That's what it is when we're selling stuff for the most part. And we can talk about trading, you know, that's a slightly different thing, but, I mean, it really comes down to someone saying, oh, I really would like to have this item so I could, you know, take this home and, you know, and, and you know, feed my family or whatever it is. And someone else saying, well, uh, you need to give me this much coin for that. Sorry. It comes down to that. Or, oh, don't have enough coin? Well, you can't get that thing because, well, you don't have enough coin. And I just don't have enough of these things to give them freely. All right, so money and uh, economization arise only when there's scarcity. Okay, it's not going to be you're not going to have a situation where there's, there's abundant supply of, of fruits, vegetables, animals going around, and then somebody's coming up to you trying to buy something from you. Now, yeah, people can make stuff. You can use skill to make certain things. Someone will inquire your uh, will uh, will want your services, employ your services to make certain things, certain clothes, or whatever it is. Yeah, there's going to be purchase in there. Because there's labor that's put in that. But for the most part, meeting the bare needs and necessities and stuff, no. There's animals, I'll go hunt my animal. Go hunt that thing or whatever it is. I'll go get that fruit off of that tree, climb that tree or whatever it is. Hit that tree, make it, shake it so the fruits come out. You know what I'm saying? want vegetables that are wildly grown in a, an area where there's a bunch of those, go take the vegetables. Or whatever it is. That's what we, we, we most people would do. Uh, but anyways, another thing is uh, there will likely be robots in the kingdom, okay, uh, in, in the millennial uh, age in which Christ reigned, there are going to be automatons. Probably not at first, but eventually robots are going to be serving humans, and they're going to be aiding humans in Scripture. Like, they're actually going to be like, praise the Lord, hallelujah. You know, they really, <laughs> they really are going to be doing that. Because it didn't say nothing about technology being uh, vanquished or anything like that. Like, Christ is going to come and destroy cars or nothing. You could assume that... Uh, technology is going to be used to even help build these kingdoms. When the Israelis start going to war with other nations, they're going to have technology. There's nothing that says that Christ is going to get rid of that stuff. So for all you know, creative minds, people who are creative may have the ability to continue to advance technologies, uh, to gather things, resources that we need uh, in this during this thousand year reign. So, uh, you know, robots being able to help you with scripture and, you know, they'll help you quote uh, whatever scripture you want. You just ask a robot. It's like Alexa or something. It actually will tell you what it is. You know, that I really do see that being uh, uh, the situation here. And uh, as long as Christ remains on earth for, let's just say, uh, that whole thousand years, these robots will not rebel. So you will not have to worry about that. Christ, we don't, you know, he don't play them kind of games. He's letting robots rebel on his, on his subjects and stuff like that. So they're going to be cool. But when Satan is let loose after that reign, and he's let loose into the world again, there probably will be some rebellion happening with these robots. But in those days of the millennial reign, I'd imagine that it would be a gradual decline that will start to happen uh, in the later phases. So that the people who are you know, living in that time during the millennial reign, uh, they're at the end, they're probably going to be those who are secretly harboring envy and uh, you know, things like that, sin toward the Lord. 
I don't think it's going to be God fearing people who love who love Jesus who are going to have to go through those those end day, that the end of days I guess you could say. All right, so uh, now my purpose wasn't to come on here and rant about the kingdom of heaven on earth, but rather to let you guys know that everything the left is doing isn't evil. Many of y'all mean well, very sure about it. Um, but some of y'all are uh, many of y'all are gay. Many of you uh, deny the sex God assigned to you at birth. Eh, God's not very happy about that. And many of you are doing drugs and masturbating and fornicating uh, because you're smoking a lot of weed. And weed tends to cause hormonal changes in the body that will make you want to have sex after you smoke it. All right? You know, I've struggled with that myself. I don't smoke that crap anymore. Okay? Many of you guys are sodomites. Okay? So you're smashing people from the back and you're getting doo-doo all over your genitalia, but yet you want to refuse some onions and some pickles on your burger because you don't like the taste of that. But you'll eat some booty, though. Yeah, I mean, I could go on and on. <laughs> and, you know, uh, uh, I'll, just I'll just close out with a prayer for you. Father God, we pray that you send your angels to aid uh, the so-called progressives who mean well for this society, and we mean this seriously uh, for those who mean well, uh, that you reveal to them the spiritual aspect of our existence and that you, you temporarily incapacitate the enemy for a time so that these so-called logical-minded people may have a glimpse of the demonic forces that are influencing their sinful lifestyles. I ask that no one be physically hurt or anything like that, if possible, or driven into a state of depression because, Lord, Lord knows that many people on the left are suffering already from mental illness and can't really handle much more of that. But what I do ask is that in the event that a homosexual parent who has in fact become a homosexual due to some kind of childhood trauma, I ask that they not transmit that trauma onto their children and that you pour your spirit onto them so that they can resist such behavior. And now, uh, Father, I'd like to ask you to send your angels to deal with many of these celebrities who are secretively engaging in human trafficking. Please heighten the awareness of law enforcement so that we can thwart any efforts to kidnap children for the purpose of evil. And should any occultists be watching this now and have plans to counterprey, I ask that their efforts be reflected back at them tenfold. Because anyone who would dare counter this prayer is obviously a very uh, wicked, uh, evil person and is deserving of your wrath, Lord. Also, if anyone is to pray to a being addressing them as father, mother, and God all in one sentence, I ask that they be afflicted with something of your choosing. Because, God, you are not a she and have not revealed yourself as a female under the current biblical narrative which you've constructed, Father God. And anyone who says so otherwise is contesting your word where it is clearly stated in John chapter 1, verse 3, through him all things were made. Without him... Nothing was made that has been made. Meaning that if you wanted to express yourself in the flesh as a woman, Jesus would have come as a woman, not a man. All right. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And I'm out.